Uh, welcome viewers. After India has made history with the Chandrayaan-3 moon launch, it has now set its eyes on the sun. Uh, these scientific breakthroughs back to back are like feathers on our country's hat. In fact, these celestial bodies are very important and are considered as sacred bodies in multiple global religions. The sun is the central body of our solar system, the world revolves around it and it is a source of energy for all planets including the earth. Today, I am joined by all the scientists who have played behind the scenes to make this project a grand success. And I am Srinidhi, reaching out to you from the Satish Tawan Space Center, uh, Sriharikota. And today we will be discussing about the impact and the benefits of the Aditya L1 space mission. So today we are joined by Dr. Anil Bharatwaj, Director of PRL, Dr. Professor Anapurni Subramanian, Director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Dr. Sankara Subramanian, Principal Scientist of Aditya L1 Mission, Dr. Durgesh Tripathi, PI of SCYT, Dr. Dipankar Banerjee, Director of IREs, Nanital, Dr. Satish Tampi, PI of PAPA, and Dr. Vipin K. Yadav, PI of Manager. What? Magnetometer joining us today for a 25 minute fireside chat on the sidelines of Aditya L1 launch. To start with the principal scientist and PI of Solex, Dr. Sankara Subramaniam, why is Aditya L1 mission so important and what are the objectives of this mission? Thanks a lot. I mean, first of all, let me thank uh, <coughs> ISRO as well as the government of India for providing a great opportunity for the solar and uh, heliophysics community of the country. Uh, both solar, heliophysics as well as astronomy thrives on data. Uh, more the data you have, we get more understanding about the uh, system. And sun is our own um, um, star, our dearmost star, so understanding them is much more important for our everyday life. So this mission, Aditya, which, when it was conceived initially, uh, with a uh, with a support from uh, our uh, uh, Professor Yuar Rao, along with uh, Dr. Shrikumar and Professor G. Srinivasan, uh, we made sure that we will have a unique data set which is not available from any other missions uh, in internationally. So the seven payloads, what was conceived for this particular mission, will provide a unique set of data which is currently not available from any other missions, which will provide us new insight into the solar and heliophysics community in India and provides some important aspects like the, uh, the initiation of the coronal mass ejections, the speed at which it gets initiated, and uh, some bay bands which are very important for the earth uh, ionospheric uh, uh, connections like uh, near ultraviolet band, and uh, the uh, high energy particles which is uh, high energy radiations as well as, as well as particles which is coming from the solar flares and coronal mass ejections. So these are the informations uh, which would be available from this particular mission which will allow us to understand the sun, its dynamics as well as the inner heliosphere which is an important element for the current day technology as well as the space weather aspects of it. Thank you so much for your remarks, sir. So now we move on to Dr. Anil Bharatwaj. So the sun is a very important energy source of life. Having understood that, it creates a trouble when it's angry. How does Aditya L1 helps us through the mission? Thank you and good morning, viewers. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that uh, Aditya L1 is a multi-wavelength, multi-instrument and multi-directional mission. Multi-wavelength because it works in X-rays, UV, and visible. Multi-instrument because there are seven experiments on board. And multi-directional because it looks not only in the sun direction, but also around it. Now, when we, the sun becomes angry, there are two types of process which happens. One is solar flares, that means electromagnetic radiation, which reaches the Earth in eight minutes. But along with that, there is a mass which is also ejected out in form of plasma and that can take about two to four days to reach the earth. What we are looking for from the Aditya Alvan mission is to see the impact of solar flares as well as coronal mass ejections as they come to the earth. We have instruments which look at not only in the sun direction 
but also in other directions, for example, perpendicular to ecliptic or in the earth directions. The impact is that we need to see when the sun becomes quite angry, what are the ways in which it is affecting the planet earth and L1 point being at point L1, which is just 1% away from the earth, it is able to provide us a lot of new informations of the plasma and the electromagnetic radiations which is reaching the planet Earth. Um, thank you so much, sir. So now we'll move on to Dr. Annapurni Subramaniam. So the science behind this mission is very unique. So what's the impact of this on the Earth and also on the heliosphere? Yeah, so thank you for having me on this show. Um, to put the thing in context, uh, I am the director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics and we have delivered the, the, one of the major payloads on this mission. This is the visible emission line chronograph. So if you actually look at the uh, words used in it, it is visible because it is using, seeing the sun in the visible wavelength. Emission line, so what is it detecting? It is the emission line of certain elements because the corona is hot the emission which you get is in the terms of uh, it's not absorbing the light which is coming from the uh, uh, sun but it's already hot so it is coming down by emitting lines so we are tracking these lines using what a coronagraph now what is a coronagraph this instrument makes a total solar eclipse all the time within the instrument so you are looking at the sun all the time 24 7 through using this mission and this instrument looks at the sun as though it is always in total solar eclipse now why you want to have the eclipse all the time because you want to see the corona why corona because when sun burps when sun is angry the corona is what it takes the matter away now what is unique about this instrument this is going to see the corona as close as possible from the disk of the sun now what is so challenging about it it is because the sun's corona is a million times fainter than the disk of the sun. So you have to not see the disk of the sun, but see only the corona. So this instrument is very difficult to make, challenging, but it is made. Now it's going to the orbit. Now what we plan to study using this instrument is the corona, its dynamics. Through this emission line, you can actually measure the velocity by simple physics called Doppler effect. So you can measure the velocity, you can measure how much matter is moving, and eventually how that matter will come to the Earth and the helios heliosphere. So it's overall this instrument, along with the others, of course, the other PI will also be explaining about it. So these holistically will give you a lot of information regarding not only the sun, but also the heliosphere. Thank you. That was very interesting, Doctor. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to Durgesh Tripathi, Dr. Durgesh Tripathi. You are the PI of the pay suit lo uh, for the payload suit. How is that different from other telescopes like Hubble or James Webb? And what are you going to investigate using this? Yeah, so good afternoon. My voice is going to mumble by, uh, because I'm still in the awe of the, of the launch and one of the payload is gone there. So um, essentially, uh, JWST, which is James Webb Telescope and the Hubble Telescope, they are going to look at the universe, different objects, galaxies, star formation, and, and other objects you see in the universe. Whereas uh, when we talk about it, uh, L1, it is going to look at one particular object, which is our sun. Um, and it's also uh, kept on the other side of the Sun-Earth line at the L1 point, whereas the James Webb Telescope went on the other side of the Earth, which is uh, at the L2 point. Now, uh, the scientific difference, of course, they, they also observe in ultraviolet, but uh, um, uh, Aditya, as uh, Professor Anil Bharadwaj and also Professor Anapurni Subhman alluded to, these are multi-wavelength uh, 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 satellite, and they will be observing all across the, um, the electromagnetic spectrum. In particular, SUIT is going to be looking at the ultraviolet radiation uh, in 2000 to 4000 angstrom, if that matters to you, uh, um, uh, emits from the lower and the middle atmosphere of the sun. And what we want to look at that how in general the sun's atmosphere is coupled by looking at the observations at various height and uh, how actually this radiation is coming and uh, getting absorbed in the uh, Earth atmosphere and what kind of effect it can have in the chemistry of ozone and oxygen, for example, and also these explosions which are happening, how much radiation they are creating, and how much effect it would might have. Thank you. 